Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender tutorial and uh, today we're going to be looking at a step-by-step -step tutorial of how I made this transition effect or teleportation effect in Blender 2.8. So you can see it's not just a simple linear wipe, uh, it's uh, we have two different materials happening here. Uh, we have the original material or textures uh, for the character and then we have this emissive material and then the transparent part where we see through uh, the character uh, making it uh, seem like uh, the, his, they're just fading into or just teleporting into the scene. Now we also have a light show going on to sell the effect a little bit better and uh, so we have particles emitting from uh, this material and uh, you can see they just follow that material as well and then we have these light streaks. Uh, if you look at them closely you see they just also fade into the scene and uh, kind of rotate, go around the character to sell the effect. So let's see how that is done. So I've already set up the scene uh, to include the character. The, the character has some bit of animation. I got the character from Mixamo, so you can get them from there as well. And uh, yeah, have half of the work done for you. Uh, now let's begin by setting up the materials. And uh, uh, this character has a set of materials, a different material for the cloth, uh, and then uh, the character themselves. So that you can see there are two different materials. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is just work on this cloth uh, material uh, object. And then after I do that, after I set up the material, I'll just copy them over to the character uh, so that we can speed up the process. Now, what we're going to be doing uh, is use the linear gradient texture uh, to create that, that top down wipe and then uh, use that use that as a mask uh, for the materials so let's set that up uh, i'll go on and add a texture gradient texture now if i preview this gradient texture you can see that we have the gradient coming from the right uh, to the left we want it to be from top to bottom so that uh, the white area is uh, the opaque area or showing the textures and then the black area is uh, the transparent area so to control the gradient, I'm just going to add uh, texture coordinate mappings, control T uh, to add those. Uh, this shortcut will only work if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, so make sure you have that enabled. And uh, now to control this easily, uh, you can use these values here to control the rotation of the gradient, but uh, to have it, to make it more easy, I'll just add an empty. Mm, where is that empty cube? And uh, scale it down maybe like that and then select it as the target object and uh, now that we have that uh, set up I want this to control uh, the position of the gradient but right now if I try to move this or rotate the empty uh, even though we have it set as the target it's not really controlling uh, the texture coordinates or the the gradient and that's because uh, we still have the texture coordinate uh, input or output set to generated. We want to, you want to change it to object so that we have uh, this object control the gradient. And uh, I want remember we want uh, the white part to be up and the black part to be down. So I'll rotate this on the y axis by negative 90 degrees so that we have that. And uh, you can see now if I move this, I get that transition I want. So I'll just animate this to move from top. Uh, to bottom like that so that we have so remember the white the white parts are going to be opaque and the black parts are going to be transparent and you can see what we have so that will give us that give us that fed and uh, if I select uh, this material uh, we are previewing the cur currently we are previewing uh, the the gradient and if we preview the material you can see we have our material ready, but uh, we want to use this gradient as our alpha mask. So if I feed this directly into the alpha channel, I should be able to uh, to see the transition. Now, if you're using cycles, you should be able to see uh, the transparency already, but uh, because we're using EV, uh, we need to set up the transparency to work. So right now, if you go to the material settings, you should see that uh, the blend mode is set to opaque want to change that to alpha blend and that should give you uh, the effect you want you can see now we get that transition 
Sometimes when you have alpha blend enabled, you see some artifacts. I don't know if, you, if they are visible here, but uh, uh, if to reduce on that, you can remove show back face and uh, yeah, you can see the difference. And we see a few things here that are not supposed to be seen and uh, this is this is how it's supposed to look. So now we have that, which looks great. So in my transition, you can see it's not just the alpha transition, we also have that emission uh, part. To do that, I, since we already have this gradient setup, uh, what we can do is, uh, let me see, what we can do is use this gradient as uh, as to as an emission mask as well. So I can add maybe a color ramp here, a color ramp here. Connect this directly to the connect our gradient uh, to our color ramp here, and connect this to the emission. And uh, we still get the same gradient because we haven't really changed much. Uh, but we just set this up as the emission mask, and uh, we can even give this a color if you want. But we don't want this to overpower the original texture. So what I can do is uh, start playing, controlling, start controlling uh, this gradient. Maybe add another node here to cut off where the emission is going to be. Something like that. So, yeah, something like that. And uh, this gradient is not, this emission is not strong enough. So what I can do if I want to make it more powerful, I can add a color, hue and saturation and increase uh, the value to something like four. And that should make it a bit more powerful. Now, if we preview this in the render settings, you can see the light. And uh, if I turn on bloom, uh, we should be able to see some bloom like that. I'm not sure if, if it's coming out yeah, it's coming out, so something like that. So you can see what we are having. Uh, if you look at uh, my my transition, we have a few effects going on here. So it's not just a smooth transition. And uh, the way you handle that is uh, you can just add a noise texture, mix it with this gradient. So let's first preview the gradient here. You can see it's a simple black and white gradient. If we add a noise texture, texture noise, and see what we have. Maybe scale it up, Maybe scale it down. And I can add a convert math node to control the contrast. I can change the operation to power and uh, play with the contrast like that. Then we can add another math node here. Just use this. Play around. Play with this here and see what we get. Duplicate this again to mix it with the color ramp here. Uh, to get some of these details into our emission gradient. I just have to find uh, the right setup here. I think we're already starting to see some details there. So what I need to do is uh, let me add another math node here. To control those effects, maybe. And uh, actually, this is not how I did it in the original version. Uh, I always forget how I did it, did it in the original version, so I end up changing things a bit. So uh, if you watch the time lapse, you will notice that I'm doing things completely different. But uh, as long as you're, you're achieving the same results, uh, always works. So yeah, think, I think this is a better way of handling this uh, because uh, the original version, I took a lot of steps to get here. And I think this is even much better to a bit much a much better way to handle this than uh, origin, originally was handling it so 
maybe we can expand uh, this just a bit. Let's have something like that. And uh, this, sh this should have stayed black and white. So, and uh, then we can colorize uh, this again uh, with the color ramp. Now we can just change this value. I'm previewing this here to whatever colors we want. And uh, if you want to be fancy, you can even add different colors. Which I think would look much cooler. Again, you still have control here over where you want this to be. And then we can feed this directly into the emission. Preview this. And uh, I think this looks way uh, cooler. something like that. So I don't like how this edge is too strong. So what I'm going to do is go to this uh, power value here, play around with that until I get something. Yeah, like that. So that we have that kind of fire transition, which I think looks really cool. Uh, let me bring back my MHC value here to one. Now we, I think we're done with the transition. All we have to do is copy the rest of the transition uh, to the to the rest of the materials we have. So I think okay. So the body doesn't really have the same material. So I'm just going to select all the nodes we set up uh, that connect to the emission and alpha. So these here. Uh, make sure you have a node selected as the active node, as otherwise you're going to get an error when copying these over. So select everything, select the second material, paste them over there. And then I think this is the emission input. Is it? Yeah. And then Then we need at setup. We also need to set up the alpha. So the alpha comes from this gradient directly into uh, the alpha. So let's set that that up as well. So I think here, and now uh, we need to to get. Let me see. Let me find that this gradient connected to the alpha like that. Okay, so let's make sure that uh, we also give it, give this material uh, a blend mode of alpha blend and uh, remove the back face. So the gr this uh, this empty seems not to work on uh, the second material. So let's find out why. So this material here should sample, should get its coordinates from that empty. And uh, yeah, now everything works. Now for the lighting, uh, because remember, if you're using EV, uh, the, the emission you have for the materials doesn't really create any lights, doesn't generate any lights. So we have to fake the light. So what I'm going to do is add uh, a circle. Uh, we don't need that many vertices. I'll just use about eight. And now we're going to add a light. 
a point like, like that and apparent it to this circle, control P. And uh, if we select this empty, uh, sorry, this, let me change this to this view. If we select uh, this circle and go to the display properties and, uh, and then under uh, instancing, turn on vertex or vats, it will duplicate all uh, the children or any objects that's parented to, to, the, to it are uh, on each of its vertices. And uh, that way we can have it create a ring light around uh, this object. And now this can be parented uh, to the empty. Now, if this un is unmated, you can see what we have. So this ring will light up our scene. And now we can also change uh, the color. Maybe increase it. Okay, that's too powerful. Let's try something like 500. Remove this keyframe. Great. Now we have the transition we want. Uh, we can add a background. We can add other objects in the scene. Uh, just to, to prove that uh, uh, we have this object is really transparent where it should be transparent. And just also make sure that this is not too bright. And see, we get uh, the transition we want. Now for the other things like how to do these light strips, I'll do the, the tutorial for those and uh, post it on my second channel, uh, Blender Money, because I want to limit this channel to one video uh, per day. Uh, so if you want to see how I made uh, the particle emissions and uh, 